Hey guys, here we go into a film study on Robert Easter Jr. for his upcoming fight with Mikey Garcia, which is very interesting to me. Uh, I'm really curious um, about Mikey Garcia's career, um, as I'm hoping that it's going to wind up with him colliding with Vasily Lomachenko. Um, but it's looking like he might kind of try to, you know, move up in weight rather than fight Lomachenko, but move up in weight and fight Errol Spence, which would be a really interesting fight. I think that he thinks he has a better chance of beating Errol Spence because Errol Spence's lack of head movement and his great right hand. Um, but who knows? You know, who knows? Um, I will be doing film study on him fighting uh, Sergei Lipinets, uh the first four rounds. And I'm going to do the first four rounds of Robert Easter Jr. versus Luis Cruz. Let's go ahead and get into that. What we're going to be looking at actually is um, how he sets his offense up, all of his offense, what patterns he's using. Um, his defense, um, and his defense is not just when his opponent throws punches at him, but how he reacts after he throws his own punches um, and what he does. And his active guard, if he has an active guard or not, if he's moving, slipping, rolling, giving his opponent different looks, making him think. You know, um, the more the more active his guard is, the more his opponent has to think about what they're doing, the more that they have to feint him. Um, and it just creates a huge hole in their opponent's offense by having one. But anyway, comes out right away, shoots a jab at him, commits to a jab without knowing how his opponent's going to react to it. Um, doesn't almost get countered by that shot, but you can see that his opponent's looking to counter. So we'll see if Robert Easter starts uh, um, using more feints. Uh, as you can see, his very next shot, he shoots a jab here. Now one thing I want to point out, uh, and go back real, real quick right here. Um, when he shoots his jab to the body, he doesn't step with his back leg, right? So he can kind of bring his weight back. But when he shoots his right hand to the body, he's also telegraphing that he can't throw a right hand anyway because he's not in position. Um, that's just kind of a technical flaw uh, because he's only looking to shoot that shot to the body to get maybe maybe make openings later on in the fight. But he he really needs to bring his right leg with him in case his opponent just decides to step in and start throwing punches or whatever. Um, but he can't pivot right now. He can't move off the line. He can't really do a lot. Um, but that's just a small technical aspect. Um, but notice how he steps with it, and then he shoots his jab to the head here, and he steps with that as well, right? Kind of telegraphing that he's about to attack. Um, and eventually, you run into people that, that can pick up on this, and I think Mikey Garcia is one of them. Uh, when he fought Sergey Lipinets, Lipinets had a stepping style, stepping style, and he was able to capitalize on it uh, for a while. Also against Broner, I think that he had the ability to capitalize on some of Broner's offense because of that same timing. Um, so this might pose a huge problem for for Robert Easter Jr. if he doesn't know how to to fix it. Um, and and we'll also talk about a few other stance stuff and technical aspects of Robert Easter Jr. Uh, some things that I really don't like, but um, we'll we'll talk about them when they when they show up. But um, right away we see him shoot that jab and then bring his hand in front of his face to catch the counter jab that might come, and then also kind of wing his left hand a little bit as he was going to throw a counter left hook. Uh, so some interesting stuff from Robert Easter Jr. so far. Now. Here, I'm not sure exactly what he was expecting because his opponent didn't parry the last jab, so I'm not sure why he's throwing the hook here. Um, is he only throwing the hook because his opponent parries it with the catch, um, and then he tries to come back with the hook here and then throw the right hand? But he winds up kind of out of position um, and committing to multiple layers of offense, right? One, three, two, and stays on the line with his opponent. Notice how after he throws all those punches... He stays on the line. He doesn't move off the line. He doesn't use any head movement. Um, and we have seen his opponent already try to counter one time, right? So we'll see where that goes, and we'll look at the other opportunities that Robert Easter has to move off the line um, and to defend himself. Um, comes in. Now, this is interesting. So the last time he shot his jab, um, his opponent countered it, or not countered it, uh, parried it. Now this time... He's coming in, and he kind of rolls forward and then jumps off of his front foot to throw this, this left hook here. Um, and I think that um, it he kind of telegraphs it, and that's why he doesn't get his opponent to react the same way um, by, slip, by trying to catch it, catch the jab. Um, but he does do a good job of 
uh, catching him with the right uppercut after he steps all the way in right here. But look at how he's on the line with his opponent. And this is really interesting because he throws that shot, he catches him with the next one, but he winds up eating that right hook from his or that left hook from his opponent anyway, um, which is not what you want to see, right? Um, but because he's committing to multiple punches and being on the line for multiple weight transitions, um, he's going to put himself in danger. And Mikey Garcia is a hell of a puncher. If we don't know anything else about Mikey Garcia, we know that that guy can freaking hit. Um, and he has a great left hook and a great right hand. Um, but anyway, um, after Robert Easter throws that uppercut, he transitions his weight to his left leg, and then he throws a, a left hook uh, and kind of pivots off the line. So a little bit of good right there, uh, but staying on the line for a while. Now, again, I don't know why it went so far back. Uh, flashing the lead hand right, and shooting a jab and then committing to a straight right hand. And then where does he go after he lands it? He stays on the line and brings all his weight back, right? He's going to have a little bit of a problem, I think, uh, with Mikey Garcia if he's staying on the line with him, even if he's hitting Mikey Garcia. Now, right away, this is interesting. His opponent feints him. It gives him just a little bit of a feint, and it makes Robert Easter fly back, right? And we've seen him get fainted a few times already, and so far it's really easy to feint him, uh, and he has had very similar responses, now, the reason this is going to be important is because Mikey Garcia is starting to develop a kind of an active guard, a really like, uh, 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 right? And that might make Robert Easter Jr. really hesitant. You know, Mikey Garcia is a very, very, very experienced fighter. And I think that that might play a huge part in his fight with, um, with Robert Easter Jr. As you can see, his opponent is not really doing anything. He's just kind of got his high guard up, uh, not really doing anything. Um, and it's really easy to to just attack him because he's he's not even being reactive, you know. Um, but uh, getting back to the film study, after that feint, he shoots that jab. And look at how his opponent reacts, right? He just catches it on, on the arm, right? Robert Easter's kind of stuck out there and then takes a step back. Now Robert Easter comes in with that hook again. Now let's look at how he throws this. I'm really curious. He jumps all the way in. Now, this is going to be really dangerous if he throws that because he's in the air. He has no power on it, right? And what is he doing with that, right? He's not looking for information. He's putting himself very out of position. Um, he's He doesn't even throw the right hand, so that left hook that throws him way out of position, um, It's he's not doing anything with it. And on top of that, we have this situation right here where he just shot the jab at his opponent, boom, and he saw that he reacted like this. He kept his high guard up, right? And then when he throws the hook, he winds up getting it blocked anyway. Now there's a definite difference in his technique here that's kind of telegraphing um, why it's a left hook and not a jab uh, because his opponent is able to read it really well and get his guard up. Um, I still can't figure it out myself. Steps. And then it comes, okay, so um, normally it would be that step, and then the jab would already be out there. Uh, so it looks like he does go to catch it, and then he realizes it's going to be a hook after. So he goes to catch it first because on the step, that gets him to bring his hand out. Um, and then he, he kind of turns away from it um, and brings his hand back after um, to, to catch it. So um, it's not even a good feint and attack either. Um, and obviously if it's not landing and it hasn't been set up super well, he just winds up putting himself really out of position uh, for kind of no reason. And again, just shooting his jab. You know, he's not fainting. He doesn't have an active guard. His head is just sitting there. Um, and he's just exploding out of his guard and stepping with his jab, right? Shoots a 1-2 here, right? No chance to land them. Uh, he's not setting up his right hand very well. He's just kind of expecting his his athletic ability to land those shots for him. Parrying and then controlling his opponent a little bit. Ooh, and now he shoots the jab off that step and almost gets countered over the top. Um, and this is because he's not setting that jab up. He's not fainting. He tells his opponent that he's going to throw it every single time that he throws it um, because he doesn't faint and he doesn't have head movement. And he's not using an active guard. He just steps forward and... Um, into his opponent's range 
and almost gets caught with the jab. If his opponent was a little bit better, he wouldn't have to use the catch and counter style, right? Where the jab has to hit him first and then he throws the right hand. As you can see, he waits till it gets to him before he starts countering. But his opponent's setting up traps for it because his opponent, because um, Easter is being so predictable. The left hook has almost no chance to land either. But notice how he doesn't set that up either. He just kind of explodes out of his guard. Um, not looking great for Easter. Again, no setup there. Very basic. He's just standing on the line with his opponent, not landing either of those jabs, not landing this right hand either, completely getting blocked. Um, and that's because there's no setup. You know, he's not, you know, maybe he's not fast enough to utilize this technique or this ability to set his punches up with just his speed and rely on his power um, but you have to feint you have to probe you have to set your punches up you have to do something uh, not everyone's Floyd Mayweather and another thing people don't realize that Floyd Mayweather is more than just fast he does have an active guard he does faint a decent amount um, and you have to respect his feints because he's so fast you know and and it it does work for him um, whereas Robert Easter Jr. does not look to like have the technique or the speed to really set those shots up either. Again, just stepping with the jab, telegraphing it, but he does pick up on the fact that his opponent's looking to counter him, and he winds up countering him with the left hook right here, um, and then doesn't eat a shot and kind of moves off the line. Um, so decent work there, um, setting a trap for his opponent. We'll see where he goes with that, but again... One of the parts that's really bad is that he has to commit to this jab and put himself out of position, right, for like maybe a counter right hand or a counter left hook himself um, before he's able to set up that other shot. So it doesn't, it's, it's a trap, but it's not a great trap and he's not, he's not doing a lot. Again, flashing his lead hand out there, controlling his opponent now, you, starting to get an active guard, starting to do stuff, but again... Interestingly, right, when he's doing this stuff, he's not getting anything done, right? And the reason that that is, is is the same thing that Victor Ortiz found out when he fought Devin Alexander. He was fainting and probing from too far away. Now he's flashing his lead hand, right? His opponent looks to set something up. He controls him, right? But look at how far away he is. He can't hurt his opponent from here. So he has to commit to the jab. He has to commit to the jab by stepping with it, and he still telegraphs it. In slow-mo, it actually looks like he hits him. Um, actually, it does look like it hit him. I didn't think it did at first, but it looks like he catches him. <laughs> that face is so funny. Um, but, but not getting his opponent out of position because he's so far away. Now, there you go. Decent, a, decent, um, a decent setup there. Flashes the lead hand uh, and gets his opponent to react. Um with i'm not sure what his opponent was going to react with though i'm not sure because he just kind of winds up eating a right hand um and then he gives him a roll and kind of i'm not sure if he eats that left hook or not doesn't look like it but he gives him a roll and moves off the line a little bit so oh yeah it doesn't look like it hits him um so he kind of rolls into a hook it's it's good that he was using um, defensive responsibility and moving off the line. So we're not going to penalize him in, in terms of defense because he got hit for it, because he is showing that he's moving his head, and that's what you want to look for. It's that you want to see that they're doing it or they're working on it or that something, uh, because that's going to go a lot farther in training and learning and drilling than anything else. Now, again, setting up these shots that don't land by committing to his jab. Um, and what it looks like it's he's doing here is he's shooting that jab and then hoping his opponent is going to react. Um, he does catch him with that jab, um, but I'm not sure why he throws the rest of the punches um, because they weren't set up anyway. Committing to that jab to the body, and then boom, getting caught with a, a great left hook right there. Now again, this is the problem with setting your punches up, and it doesn't look like in real time, it doesn't look like that left hook even lands, but boom, we can clearly see it lands here. Um, and this is because he's not setting his punches up. He's, he doesn't have an active guard, right? He's not fainting. Um, and especially when you have, when you're stepping with your punches, you have to, you have to set them up. You have to do something, you know, you have to faint forward, step forward, right? Boom, coming in and out, right? 
and get your opponent to react, um, especially when you're the one putting on all the pressure and you have such a huge tell in your offense. Again, shooting the jab. He's still not fainting. He's still not probing. He still doesn't have an active guard. Really easy to faint off the line. And then when he does shoot his jab, he steps with it again and slightly moves off the line after. But here you go again, shooting that jab and starting to get caught with a counter jab um, as he makes it, as he telegraphs it. Um, now, it doesn't look like his opponent's jab is landing super well. But one thing that I do know about Mikey Garcia is he loves to jab with you. He is a hard puncher. No matter what punch he throws, he's just trying to kill you with it. And uh, he loves to trade jabs. And I think that that's going to be something that's really good for Mikey Garcia against Robert Easter Jr. so far. Um, and although it might wind up being kind of a, an athletic battle, and Robert Easter Jr., he has the athleticism to, to athlete with Mikey Garcia, um, the timing of these shots, again, look at how easy it is for his opponent to catch this. He almost doesn't even have to move out of position anymore um, to catch it and get out of the way um, and uh, make Robert Easter Jr. ineffective. Great job right there. He goes to the body and then catches him with the right hook or left hook. Now, this is a product of Robert Easter Jr. being really easy to get out of position, and then he comes up straight up on the line. Now, I talked about it a little bit, how easy it is to feint him, um, and I think that that might wind up being uh, very bad for him too because one of the things about um, being fainted, and if you watch really high-level guys, um, after they get fainted out of position, right, if you – if you shoot a jab at them, right, and they go to catch it, boom, and then they're like, oh, shit. Or, like, you shoot you shoot a fake right hand and they move like this, right, to get out of the way of the right hand, bah, right? When you do that, they they understand, oh, he might have fainted me and put me out of position. So when they transfer their weight, boom, now they're going to take a little sidestep off the line, right? Boom, we'll roll the next shot, right? They're not going to stay on the line for you. And as you can see here... Robert Easter Jr. kind of staying on the line with his opponent and just kind of getting caught with a lazy punch. You know, his opponent's able to feint him easily and then just kind of walk him into a left hook and be like, hey, bro, you learned your lesson yet? Anyway, moving on. Again, shooting his jab. Going to catch a counter jab, right? But um, if you watch um, Francisco Vargas back in the day, man, that guy had a killer jab cross block right he can just pop 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 you know just like triple g today you know great defense for the jab um so his is a little late but um he understands that his opponent is kind of on you know a little bit more of a catch and counter style than a straight counter now stepping fainting with the hook and then stepping in with the jab again um you know that's a lot of work to land a jab um, and again, it's on that same timing where when he steps with it, he's putting himself out of position. So if he were to feint that, that left hook, excuse me, uh, if he were to feint that left hook and his opponent were to just say, okay, boom, throw a right hand. Oh my goodness, the hiccups. Um, um, he would be out of position. So I'm not sure why he's, he's fainting what, what would be a jab anyway, um, or he's, he's fainting a hook that looks like a jab. So that he can throw a jab after, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me at the moment. Um, you know, I'm not sure why he wouldn't do that and then shoot a, a shot to the body. But again, here he gets fainted, takes a step back. His opponent steps on his foot right here. You can see his left foot is on Robert Easter's right foot, but he shoots that jab to the body. But it's really easy for him to faint his opponent and get Robert Easter out of position. Um fainting to the to the body and then again look at how far he steps with the jab right uh it's going to be a huge problem with him no setup to that jab uh no setup to this hook i'm not sure why he's throwing it like this um it's very telegraphable because he always explodes out of his guard so you know it's either a left hook or a jab but he's not consistently landing either one of them so this is a really interesting round to score because we know that robert easter won it but did he win it or did he just do more than the other guy, right? And again, fainting him, stepping all the way in, and then his opponent throws a right hand. Um, he does get a piece of it, right? But it's really easy to get Robert Easter out of position. Um, but I think that um, that might be a decent 
uh, strategy for him against Mikey Garcia uh, because Mikey Garcia has a, a great one-two. So just kind of getting away from it here. Um, but if he has his hand down and Mikey Garcia is ever get, able to get a piece of that lead arm and pull it back like he likes to do, he likes to stick it in like this curve it this way, pull that left arm down and throw a right hand, um, he might be able to cause a lot of problems for for Robert Easter. And again, Robert Easter, just flashing the lead hand, you know, really quick, but not setting it up. Again, you can see him step on that guy's foot if you want. You can go watch it on your own time. Um, but we're going to get back into round two, and then um, we're going we're gonna to go this one a little quicker. Again, faint to the jet, or faint to the body. Um, and Robert Easter parries it, right? Very easy to get him out of position. He doesn't think anything else is coming. And notice how he faints, he, he parries that jab to the body, but the last time his opponent did this, his opponent fainted that and threw a right hand instead, or rather as well, right? Is he going to walk into that right hand? What is, is he not thinking about the fact that his opponent is looking to set those shots up? Now, again, Robert Easter telegraphing the fact that he's throwing this shot by stepping with it, no feints, right? And then boom, just walks into a right hand to the body. Um, and then his opponent, you know, just kind of flurrying on his body. Um, and I would say winning that exchange overall. Now, Robert Easter doing a good job on the inside, controlling him here while his opponent is pulling on him. Creates a little space and lands a great right hand there. So that might be something that um, if he wants to fight, if he winds up fighting on the inside a lot against Mikey Garcia, he's going to have a huge advantage. In spite of the fact that most people think that um, tall fighters have the are at a disadvantage on the inside, Mikey Garcia stands up really straight. You know, he stands up really straight, and on the inside, I don't think he fights super well on the inside. He doesn't know how to hunker down and get, you know, boom, boom, you know. And you can see that Robert Easter, you know, he knows how to create this space and throw this really short shot. Now, um, no, nah, I don't want to talk about it. I'll talk about it later. Um, oh, I got an email. Cool. <clears throat> um, again, very easy to feint him, right? Boom, find out that he's trying to counter um, and get him out of position so you can feint him now, right? And this is what I would tell his opponent. Feint to the body with the jab, get him to throw that hook, and then go overhand with the right. Um, uh, really easy to feint Robert Easter so far. And telegraphing those shots. Um, and he doesn't he doesn't have an active guard. He doesn't move off the line after uh, he's easy to feint, and he doesn't have the greatest positioning after he's fainted. He doesn't react super well. He doesn't set his punches up well. Boom. He just throws that right hand for no reason, right? He didn't set it up. Did he really expect it to land? Now, this is the part where I'm going to talk about something else that's a little different. And it's something that I don't really like about Robert Easter. Um, in spite of the fact that people say, oh, he reminds me of Thomas Hearns. Thomas Hearns had a great stance, like a fantastic stance. He was really well balanced, and he was really able to transition his weight from his left, his right leg into his left leg. Watch how Robert Easter comes forward here. Watch this little shuffle in his hips. Boom, boom. And that's because he's really, he's really sideways. Look at how, how much he telegraphs this right hand. He doesn't even get his hips all the way into the shot um, because he's, he's standing so sideways. And if you notice when he's... When he's fighting, he's going to be really sideways like this, um, and that's that's going to make him have like a great left hook because he's really going to be able to turn his hips into that shot, right? Boom. But he's not going to have a great right hand because he's not going to be able to get his hips all the way because he's standing so, not square, but so karate style, you know, so completely sideways. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Mikey Garcia is actually able to get so much power in his right hand is because he's kind of square, you know, and he can really transition his weight and not really worry about getting caught up in his shoulder and get that power into it. And then um, 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 why he also has a great jab is because he can, because he's a little square too, uh, he can stick his, his hip, he can launch his hip into the jab too. You know, I don't recommend this, right, because you don't want to put yourself out of position, but it's one of the reasons why he kind of explodes like this, boom, and then drops all his weight into his... Um, into his right hand um, after pulling back. You know, he's just got a good timing for it. Uh, and it's because he's so square, it allows him to launch that right hand super easy um, and transit start turning his hips into it um, because of his stance. But look at how Robert Easter is so sideways here. 
You know, and that's one of the reasons why um, whenever his opponent attacks, he always jumps back, right? It's because he's so square that he can't really turn and move or slip punches, you know? Like, um, because he's so square, if you throw a jab at him, he can't slip this way, right? Because his hips are locked, um, because they're pointed, you know, this way. So he can't really slip. But if he was a little more square, he could slip and transition his weight to his left leg. Um, but that's why he, I don't think he has a very good right hand either, um, is because of the fact that he's so he's so sideways. Um, and that might wind up being a huge problem for him if he only has one way to go against his opponent, and that's straight back. Uh, and that's straight back against a fighter who has a great right hand. Um, so he might wind up taking a, taking a nap, you know, um, getting caught sideways uh, when his opponent, you know, Mikey Garcia, flashes that lead hand and then catches him with a straight right. But look at how, how linear, whoops, look at how linear his feet are, right, in the direction that he's going and how he can only move back. Now, this is also a product of the fact that he looks to use um, that in and out style. But now try this at home, you guys. I know I'm like kind of getting away from the film study. To be honest, Robert Easter kind of looks like trash. You know, I'm not trying to be a dick. He probably beat me up, you know. But um, part of his craft, you know, the way that he has to fight because of his stance or the way that or the way that his stance is because of the way that he wants to fight, um, he, he has a lot of flaws, you know. And as we've seen so far, his best defensive posture is just moving straight back. It's the only thing he knows how to do. He doesn't really slip. Um, his opponent threw another shot at him and he kind of just ducked down like this to get away from it. And then he can't move anywhere because he's so square, right? So he can't transition his weight because his weight is stuck. And he just comes straight up and gets caught by that left hook, right? But the reason that he's standing this way is because he wants that karate style so he can go in and out with that jab, right? And keep his weight in, keep his hips from flying out, right? Like um, I talked a little bit about it with Billy Joe Saunders when he would shoot his jab, all he would keep his weight in his toes. He would stomp on his toes and his weight, his hips would move forward because he wouldn't catch his weight, right? So he would get stuck there. Um, but Billy Joe Saunders fixed this, right? By putting all the weight in his heel instead. And that's what um, Robert Easter Jr. needs to do. He needs to transition his weight, uh, turn sideways a little bit. And then when he steps, rather than stepping sideways and having this plant here, right? You go boom, and this is your foot catching the ground so you can go in and out, in and out. You want to turn your foot this way, point it at your opponent, and stomp on your heel, right? And it's going to allow you to, boom, right? Shoot that jab. You can shoot it, boom, with your weight in your heel. You know, you can shoot all these shots, slip, roll, boom, boom. You know, you can do all these things because when you throw your jab, you're not moving your weight. Now, for those of you at home, you know, thinking about this, keep your weight in your toes and shoot your jab and watch how your weight moves and fluctuates, right? Throw it, your, um, you don't have anything to catch your weight because on your back foot, you're supposed to kind of be on your toes. So you're just kind of throwing your weight around versus putting it in your heel. Your weight goes nowhere, right? It goes nowhere, no matter how hard you throw your, your left hand, right? Your jab, it goes nowhere because you're not allowing your weight to transition into any of your muscles in your leg. And that's just something that Robert Easter would really benefit in, in working on um, for, you know, his entire career. But anyway, good trap right here. Commits to that shot, takes a step back, and then is really able to turn his weight into that left hook uh, because he's so square already. Um, and lends a great trapping left hook there. Now, this is exactly what he doesn't want to be doing here. So he comes forward, flashes the lead hand, slams that body shot, and then immediately goes to throw a left hook as well, but gets caught on the line with his opponent uh, throwing a left hook um, because he gets caught, you know, because he's there for too long. You know, and I talk about this a lot in your in my videos. What he's looking to do is land combinations, but he stays on the line and winds up getting caught with this shot instead of taking a step back, using that in and out style to get away, or boom, pivoting off the line with his opponent, and he winds up just kind of getting caught with this left hook uh, when he shouldn't. You know, he had the he knew how his opponent would react to the jab, right, with the you know high guard, 
um, lands a great body shot, but stays on the line too long. And this is going to be a huge problem against Mikey Garcia, who likes to counterpunch anyway. Then coming forward, just getting kind of cracked with that right hand for no reason. His opponent controlling him, moving off the line really well. Again, fainting him, and all he can do is take a step back. He can't transition his weight anywhere because he's standing so sideways. He's got too much of a karate stance. There was a feint right there. Feints him, gets him to duck. Why doesn't he do that more? And then again, feints him and then shoots a jab to the shoots a right hand to the body. But look at how his opponent can't get away. Right? He's stuck there and he just moves straight back and eats a, a right hand basically in the hip. <clears throat> Now we're just gonna kind of play this and let it go, um, not committing or committing to his jab, committing to his jab, staying on the line. Oh, that was clever. He comes forward. Now I like this a lot. He controls his opponent's lead hand, throws that body shot, and then moves off the line. Kind of controls him with that left hook, but boom, almost gets caught with a counter shot. Now with this technique right here, right? I love this actually. I love this. I use this in the gym myself. Uh, well, I used to when I used to train, but you can kind of faint him, probe him, and once they're like, you know, kind of stuck in their guard, as you can see, he likes to get into his high guard. You can control them, right? Put pin their glove to their hand, shoot a right hand to the body, right? But what you want to do first, um, and for anyone who's training to do this, right? You can kind of do the same thing as you're stepping with your jab, right? Boom, right? You do it, but you control. When you transition your weight, or you, you step forward, weight in your heel, right, in your front heel, so you don't transition your weight forward, because then you have to follow your hips that direction. Um, you want to keep your weight in your right leg, but you want to control them, and then use their weight to turn out before you commit to your shot, before you throw any punches, right? You want to move off the line first, boom, boom, so that you can catch and throw punches at your opponent while controlling them, while they're attempting to move back on the line with you, rather than what Robert Easter Jr. does here, which is uh, throw the shot first and then try to move off the line and almost get caught with the left hook. You know, just a little bit safer, but I like the technique. I think it's really cool. <laughs> now, again, one of the problems with that in and out style, he steps forward, comes down ducking, and then walks into these shots. You know, they don't land, but he has a hard time throwing any punches or counters himself, uh, because of the fact that he's so easy to time. And again, and again, does the same technique, and because he's so easy to time, his opponent's able to throw those punches and move off the line, um, all because of his kind of sideways karate stance and how he comes forward. Now, again, sideways karate stance coming forward, and his opponent's able to just piece him up and, and say, later, bro, I'm out of here. Now, again... Flashing that lead hand. Look at how he just moves back because he's in that karate stance. He doesn't know how to keep hold his hips. He doesn't have a good base. And boom, almost gets caught with that right hand. Now, is Mikey Garcia going to be faster, hit harder? Is he going to be more able to land that right hand? We'll see. But we do see that it's a, it's a, a problem that uh, Robert Easter has. So fainting him there. Tries to catch him with a, a counter left hook. I'm not sure that that's exactly what you want to be doing if your opponent's fainting one twos at you, um, uh, especially one like Mikey Garcia. But let's look at his hips too. Right, look at his feet when he takes that step back. Right, he's his feet are on the same line. They're in the same position. They're on the same line. And uh, look at all look at all the rotation though that he gets on that left hook. Right, because of the fact that his feet are in that line. When he turns his shot over, boom, it's almost as if they're not on the same line anymore because he winds up in a conventional boxing stance. And the reason for that is because he's on the same line, um, his hips aren't forward anymore, they're sideways, and it just makes it a little easier to turn all your weight into it. <clears throat> but again, same karate stance, fainting forward. His opponent faints him, and all he can do, again, he can't slip to the left, right? So the way that you want to get away from the right hand when it comes, right, you want to slip to the left, to the outside of your opponent, so the right hand, the right hand has an arc in front of you, right? So if the right hand is coming at you and you're here, the right hand comes from your opponent's side, 
this way, and it comes in this right, this angle right here, right? It comes from them, their shoulder, and it's coming to your chin, and then the follow through is all the way this way. So you want to slip to the outside so it goes this way. I don't know if you guys can tell what I'm, how I'm showing it, but the arc of it, right, it goes, let's see, right, boom, right, wham. And you want, when you're, when you're slipping it, you want to slip to the outside, right? If you slip this way, right, when the right hand comes this way and you want to get to the outside of it so it slips, if you duck, you're just moving into the line of the right hand, right? And Robert Easter Jr., because he's standing so sideways, right, and he doesn't have any separation between his two feet, on the, they're on the same line, uh, he cannot slip to the outside. He can't do it because he's not able to transition any of his weight to turn that way. It's too slow because both of his feet are facing this way, right, as he's moving forward. They're both facing this way instead of facing this way, angling his hips so he can slip and transition his weight, you know. Um, just a huge flaw in his game. Um, and that's why he's, you know, almost getting caught with that right hand and then just taking a step back. But I'll talk, again, look at his feet, how they're basically pointed uh, straight. Again, no setups, really easy to time. You know, he's fast though. He's gonna beat a lot of guys that aren't very good for sure. And again, stepping in, giving away his timing, and then just eating a couple body shots um, and not landing that left hook either. But look at the, look at how he whips that left hook there, right? Because his feet are both pointing the same direction. And then boom, he's able to get all his weight into that shot uh, because of that kind of sideways stance. I wonder if he's actually left-handed. I wonder if that's it. I'm going to have to Google this after and find out that he, uh, whether or not he's a natural southpaw or not. Because maybe that's the case. I know when I first started boxing, I had the same problem. Um, I had that karate stance because I'm left-handed, so I wanted my shoulders kind of square. Not square, but like turn this way. I would just shoot my jab. I had like kind of a rocket jab, but I had like kind of a wet noodle for a right hand. It's because I didn't know how to get my hips into it. But again, look at his feet here when he comes forward. Look at how his feet are pointed the exact same direction. They're pointing, you know, toward the, toward, um, toward the fans over here, right? Where one of them, where when he's in this position, right, one of them needs to be making a T, right? Every time you transition your weight, right, so your feet are kind of pointed this way, the direction of your hips so you can move forward, right? And then when you throw a right hand, your left leg stays there and you turn into it and your feet, boom, your hips turn, and your feet make a T, right? Or the vice versa, they're pointed this way, and you throw a left hook, boom, and your right leg doesn't move at all, and, you, and they make a T here, boom, bam, or bam, you know? And you're transitioning your weight into those shots, but as you can see, he doesn't really do that, and his feet are on the same line. Look at how when he takes that step back, he has to move his hips and jump, uh, and he's just gonna get caught on the line, um, to be honest, I'm actually probably not going to do two more rounds on, on Robert Easter Jr. Um, as you can see, his opponent's attacking him, and all he can do is kind of pivot off the line and, and hope and move back. Um, uh, but I'm going to do two more rounds on Mikey. I'm going to do some rounds on Mikey Garcia versus Sergey Lipinets. Um, and Sergey Lipinets is a much better fighter than Robert Easter Jr. Uh, much, much, much better fighter. Um, so. Yeah, without giving away my prediction. Um, yeah, stay tuned for Mikey Garcia versus Sergey Lipinets film study. I'll probably do four rounds of that to kind of really talk about my points. Um, and yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks.